guys, welcome to the Being Beautifully Honest podcast and channel. Thanks for being here, being subbed. If you're not, hit the button and if you're listening on YouTube, hit the like. It's like walking in the room and hitting that light switch. Let's brighten up the place and get into the politics and BS. So, you know, I, I wanted to t- I wanted to share something with you guys and then I want to talk about this because this isn't going to go away. The people that are focusing on Kamala Harris's identity over the issues is it, it's just going it's just not going to go away. So, for those who really know the truth of what is going on or who really want to know the truth and they don't want to get caught up in the emotional stuff of well, did she say she was Indian? Did she claim to be black? Like, it's so stupid. People need to really let that stuff go and not get caught up in the conversations with people or the content of people who want to focus on that stuff. And now that she has added her VP nominee to the ticket, People now want to go back into his military history. Well, did he really do this? Did he really do that? Yada, yada, yada. When we already know that all Donald Trump does is lie, okay? I'm speaking as a woman who is the wife of a disabled veteran. I'm speaking as a woman who is disgusted by Donald Trump saying the things that he has said about service people and how they're suckers and losers and what was in it for them and calling them stupid. He lied to get out of the draft by claiming that he had bone spurs, okay? Of which my husband actually does have, and it is because he served. (laughs) So how'd you get bone spurs before you even did anything, right? But I digress, like privileged little white boy. Now you got bone spurs on your feet? Give me a freaking break. But all he does is lie. So I don't understand why anyone would be focused on anything about Kamala Harris's identity or Tim Walz's service to the country, which is verifiable, over Donald Trump's lies and his connection to Project 2025 and his entitlement and his opportunistic ways and the whole reason why he even ran for office in the first place. I previously did a politics and BS episode that you can go back and listen to where I discussed that, but nothing that he does is for anyone but himself. It's not even for his family. They just by proxy get the benefits because we already know how he cut out Mary Trump and Fred Trump the third from their inheritance from their grandfather that he didn't work for to create. How can you shut somebody out of something that you had nothing to do with? But he did. You know, like, I, I'm saying, uh, uh, ooh, I was about to say something, that I, but you know what? I'm not going to go there, but I I understand why people have some stuff done to family members who do stuff like that, because I've heard stories about people shutting people out of inheritances and family businesses and things like that. Get, give You know, the person gets like the family business that's worth like half a million dollars and they give the person like a thousand bucks, like here's some money for gas for you for like the next couple of months. People do some dirty stuff when it comes to family and inheritances, but I digress. He is so dirty and filthy. If he would do something like that to his own family, why do people want to take the chance of this man being in office again? So for the people who are creating all of this content to talk about Kamala Harris, Kamala, and I apologize, I'm just kind of used to saying it that way, Kamala Harris and Tim Walls, like, let's just be clear. The woman has definitely claimed to be black. And I'm going to play play this clip, not that it even matters to me, but I'm just so tired of these people who are saying these things about how she never claimed to be black. Because where were these people saying these things like this when it came to voting for any other candidate? Uh, let me think. Yeah, they probably didn't vote in the first place. <laughs> okay? So that's why the opinions of these people who do these types of things don't really matter much to me, but it does piss me off because it does influence 
the minds of other people and the choices that they may make as to whether they will vote or not. Because a lot of times it's not even that they will go and vote for Donald Trump, but they'll just be like, well, I ain't voting for anybody. I'm not voting at all. And if you don't vote at all, you actually are voting for Donald Trump because it helps him more than it helps her. Covenant, first of all, Tavis, I want to thank you for what you've done bringing us together and and convening us. We've had a lot of time waiting to come out to talk with each other and bond, and it's it's an incredible group. Uh, The criminal justice system is not working for the African-American community. I can tell you as the chief law enforcement officer for a major city in this country that it is not working. We see that in the statistics that you've outlined. Two million people are in the prison system in this country. Over 40% are African-American in spite of the fact that we only constitute 13% of the general population. It's not working. It's not working when we recognize that African-American men, the leading cause of their death is homicide. We overly are overly represented both as victims and as defendants and as witnesses. Our communities suffer because our babies hear the gunfire every night. So the seven-year-old has post-traumatic stress disorder and cannot go to school the next day and learn. All right, I'm going to pause it right there for a moment. Did you hear her say we and our babies when she's speaking about the African-American community being disproportionately affected by the criminal justice system? She didn't say you people. (laughs) She didn't say them. She didn't say they. She's including herself. But I digress. Let's continue. The criminal justice system is not working for us. What I think we have failed to do as a community, however, is own this issue of law enforcement. We talk about these statistics in the context always of it is unfair, it's morally incorrect. Maybe we have learned that from the church. It is morally incorrect. But nobody cares about that. You can look at Katrina. Nobody cares about the fact that we've got a bunch of young black and brown men in prison. That argument is not working. What I suggest we do as African Americans is own this issue in law enforcement and then define it in the way that works for us. Because it is a myth to say that African Americans don't want law enforcement. We do. We want our grandmothers to be able to walk to church and be safe. We want our babies to be able to walk to the park and be safe. What we don't want is racial profiling. What we don't want is excessive force. That's right. What we don't want is to have our civil liberties and civil rights be stripped. But we do want law enforcement. So let's define it in the way that works for us by saying, I want community policing. I want a police department that works in my neighborhood and in my community that reflects the mores and the culture and respects my grandmother again when they walk in to talk to her. I want a system of, of, of accountability in the criminal justice system that says law enforcement needs to own crime prevention as much as it talks about long sentences. Because nationally, only 18% of serious crime results in an arrest. So if I, as law enforcement, with my responsibility to keep you safe, only talk about keeping you safe by sending people to prison for a long time, I'm necessarily going to fall short because the vast majority of that crime's not even hitting my system. So if I'm going to keep my promise to you to keep you safe, I better talk with you about what I'm doing in terms of crime prevention, which means recognizing that people coming out of the state prisons, 60% will recidivate if we don't get them in reentry programs, if we don't get them in job training, job readiness, get them in programs that deal with their substance abuse, get them in meaningful housing and employment so they don't recidivate. All right, guys, so I'm going to stop it right there. I don't know how many times I heard her say we, us, our children, our grandmas, our, our, us, our community. Like what more do people want? My God, she is a biracial woman. I will never, ever take that away from her or disrespect that. She is biracial. absolutely freaking lutely So was Barack Obama. Okay. And for people to sit and allow this white man who's, what, daddy or granddaddy, whoever, maybe all of them were, were Klansmen that were sued by the housing department for racial discrimination in housing. Like, those are just a few instances, right, that we have on record about him. And not only just his lineage, but 
what has come out of his own freaking mouth. They're coming from these shithole countries from Africa, which Africa is not a country, it's a continent. It's like the biggest continent, but I digress. He's too dumb to know that. You know, I, I'm just basically saying for anyone to sit and focus on identity over the issues is absolutely insane, but people are going to do it. It's not going to stop. Unfortunately, race is a social construct construct that was created to divide and to conquer. And a lot of people, they still allow that. Even the ones who are supposedly the the biggest activists and the biggest cheerleaders for the black community or the African-American community, I don't think even they sometimes sit and realize how caught up they are in this stuff that was created to divide and conquer. I'm not saying that people should not hold Kamala Harris accountable. I'm not saying people shouldn't ask questions about her her professional background, but leave the race out of it because it had the race has nothing to do with the race for the presidency, especially at a crucial time like this because the same people who are sitting and questioning Kamala's identity they're not sitting and going down the list of all of Donald Trump's atrocities, his issues with identity, and his criminal convictions, and all of the different things that he has been involved with. So I am just not interested in that at all, but I really wanted to talk about that because I don't think that this mainstream media, they're going to play clips like that and content like that. So I'm going to do my best to share what I can share and hopefully it will get to the ears and to the eyes of people who really will be influenced by the truth. And I'm not saying vote and just sit on your lazy butt and not do anything, but it's more than just voting. You have to be involved. You have to be the change that you want to see. That that saying, it is the truth. And a lot of people they are expecting the government to do everything for them. And while that would be nice, unfortunately, we actually are supposed to be the government. It's a lot of crookedness and corruptness in the government. No doubt about that. We know this. That's why a lot of people, like those who are in the Senate and Congress, as long as they can continue to be reelected, they can serve for the rest of their lives. And I think that that's something that needs to change too, because if a lot of these people were not able to do that and secure their financial futures forever, then maybe they would actually want to do some real work and actually represent we the people. So anyway, I just wanted to share my thoughts on that. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Thanks for being here, liking and subscribing. I'm Beth, just being beautifully honest. So until next time, I wanted to keep it brief, beautiful. And now I'm going to say bye. Bye.